evidence. Mr. Dixon, you may proceed. Thank you, Chair Larson, and uh, good morning, Chair Larson, Chair DeFazio, uh, Ranking Members Graves and Graves, and the members of the subcommittee. Thank you for the opportunity today to discuss the FAA's efforts to keep aviation safe in the presence of 5G C-band wireless technology. We've continually maintained that through mutual cooperation, 5G and aviation can safely coexist. We have the safest aviation system in the world, and we don't take that for granted. It's something that is hard earned every day. We've achieved this because we take actions to mitigate known and potential risks to safety. And it's why the FAA has been involved in a sustained effort since well before the 2020 Spectrum auction to highlight and now mitigate potential 5G interference with critical flight systems. I wanna thank this committee for its help and support of aviation safety during this period. Our job would be significantly more difficult without the continued support of this committee. We also appreciate the wireless companies voluntarily providing us with the data that we need to maintain safety while minimizing flight disruptions during this rollout. Now we're always concerned about radio frequency interference when it comes to aviation infrastructure. But in 2018, a new potential threat emerged. The Mobile Now Act directed the FCC to evaluate the feasibility of auctioning spectrum that's adjacent to the band where radio altimeters operate. The FAA and the aviation industry urged caution. Boeing and the Airline Pilots Association and filings to the FCC back in 2018 called for more analysis of this issue. The FAA collaborated with or supported research efforts that revealed that 5G operations could significantly degrade or completely interrupt radio altimeter operation during critical phases of flight. And in December of 2020, the acting deputy DOT secretary and I sent a letter to the NTIA outlining our concerns about aviation safety backed up by the recent studies. We asked that the auction be delayed so that we could conduct a safety risk assessment and identify mitigations. Ultimately, the auction occurred and two of the wireless companies that acquired the C-band spectrum scheduled the initial deployment in early December of 2021. We engaged with our interagency partners throughout the year in an effort to access the information that was necessary to inform aviation safety mitigations. Ultimately, as the deployment approached in late 2021, Secretary Buttigieg and I requested two pauses from the wireless companies until mid-January of 2022. During the delay, we established a direct relationship with the wireless companies to receive the necessary information, transmitter locations, power levels, and signal shape characteristics uh, that uh, to begin making an aviation safety assessment. The wireless companies also agreed to keep towers turned off around airports that have low visibility approaches. The safety model that we developed, along with the new data that we had access to from the telecommunications companies, allowed the FAA to determine which combination of altimeters and aircraft could be cleared to land in low visibility conditions for specific runways at airports with 5G towers nearby. On January 19th, the wireless companies activated 5G C-band service in many of the 46 markets. Our analysis of the wireless company data has allowed us to target anticipated problem areas more precisely, reducing the impact to both industries. And while we have avoided significant disruption to commercial aviation, we recognize that some communities and operations have been affected because we have not been able to fully mitigate interference risk for certain radio altimeters. Now we know from long experience that early and open data exchange between everyone, stakeholders and regulators has proven to be critical to identify and mitigate safety risks. Aviation remains the safest form of transportation because of our commitment to being data-driven in our processes. And we will lean on it as we set new standards for altimeter performance in the new environment that's created by the 5G C-band deployment. Spectrum is a limited resource, but the demand is essentially infinite, and we know that it will increase in coming years. The FAA's primary concern is 
and always will be the safety of the aviation system. But we firmly believe that by working together, 5G and aviation can and will safely coexist. Moving forward, we are also ready to work across industry and with our federal partners on a more thoughtful, inclusive, and collaborative approach to future spectrum policy and initiatives. Thank you very much for the chance to provide this update, and I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you, Administrator Dixon. Uh, we're going to start uh, with the chair of the full committee, Mr. Defazio of Oregon. Mr. Defazio, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Administrator Dixon, uh, thanks uh, for being with us today. Um, as we've said, we, we, we understand what happened, and we want to be certain it doesn't happen again. But uh, we are in sort of a temporary uh, hold here. And, uh, I, you know, it's not totally clear to me and I think others that what happens at the end of the, uh, the six months of voluntary uh, period. Uh, I've heard some say, no, it's not limited to six months, and others, you know, uh, saying, yes, it is limited to six months. So could you, um, you know, for instance, where they've turned off towers in proximity to uh, airports with Cat 3 uh, approaches and low visibility issues, uh, the lower power and that, I mean, how is this going to be solved long term, and how long do the temporary measures stay in place, and what are we going to do permanently? Well, uh Thanks for the question, uh, Chair DeFazio. And, and all parties are working together very effectively at this point. Uh, and we have agreed to take the immediate steps necessary to avoid disruption uh, to the aviation system and, and to stay at the table and work in good faith uh, to determine the next steps. So, so far, the telecom companies, uh, as I mentioned, are, have agreed to refrain from activating their 5G towers that are unacceptably close to runways, according to the FAA's safety model, which we continue to refine. Uh, they're also providing us with more data in a timely fashion uh, to provide certainty and more predictability uh, to the aviation system and also to help refine our safety analysis. And they're working with us uh, as I speak actually uh, on a flight test program that will contribute meaningfully to establishing uh, the new standards uh, for uh, radio altimeters and also to, to refine what we're doing um, right now. So I'm encouraged by the progress. Um, you know, we're certainly in a much better place today than we were two to three weeks ago. And uh, we certainly don't want to be, uh, uh, you know, repeating these uh, deadlines that we've had to, to overcome. Uh, we're finally getting the specific detailed information that we need to make accurate safety assessments. And that's what we're, what we are, uh, what we are focused on. Um, and the wireless companies, again, I think they've learned a lot about aviation safety and we've certainly learned about their business. We're actually getting, uh, we're asking them for data that they've never had to provide to the government before. So, uh, that has been uh, very beneficial to both sides and we'll continue that dialogue as we go forward. Right. I think we had two sets of engineers with different uh, 